I'm going to just talk a few words about high extended lymph node dissection during radical cystectomy. And uh, let me just preface my comments by saying that for whatever reason, I seem to always end up in places where my life automatically becomes difficult. Uh, initially, I was at the Cleveland Clinic and uh, we were doing partial nephrectomies in Andy Novick's home. Let me tell you, that is not uh, something for the faint of heart. So, but it made us, uh, you know, uh, do the due diligence. It made us uh, cross all the T's, dot the I's, etc., etc. And uh, I think uh, uh, we became better surgeons for it. Uh, moving to USC, uh, that is the home of radical cystectomy. <clears throat> and if the number of lymph nodes retrieved are not in the triple digits, they just feel they haven't had a good day in the operating room. Uh, inferior mesenteric artery is the, the upper end of the dissection and uh, I often ask them, why stop at the IMA? I mean, there's no stop sign there, keep going. I'm sure there are lymph nodes higher up. <clears throat> I'm kidding. But the bottom line is that uh, bladder cancer is a deadly disease and we only have one shot at it. A positive margin is a death sentence. An, inad an inadequate lymph node dissection is doing the patient a disservice. And uh, while the upper extent of the lymphadenectomy may not be uh, 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 unanimous, uh, um, <clears throat> there may not be unanimity in, in what should comprise the upper extent of the lymph node dissection, but certainly some points are pretty crystal clear. Number one, within the pelvis, the lymph nodal clearance has to be pristine. So that supersedes the cephalad extent of the dissection. And by that I mean that the, not only the external and common iliacs, but also the, the, peri, uh, peri the perivesical area in cases where the, lymph, where the nerve sparing has not been done. The perivesical area has to be cleaned out. Uh, but the most important, I think, is the presacral area. The presacral area, which is the fossa of Marseilles, which lies posterior lateral to the uh, external iliac artery, common iliac arteries on both sides, you lit for example, if this is the right side, you literally have to dissect off the ex external iliac, the common iliac, bring it medially and go between it and the psoas muscle deep down where the sciatic, uh, where the uh, obturator nerve goes right into the, uh, into the uh, uh, pelvis and the lymph nodes retrieved from there are critical. Um, Pre-sacral lymph nodes may or may not be removed, but pre-sciatic have to be. Um, as far as the cephalad extent is concerned, you can take your pick. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, Urs Studer's um, junior faculty who spent a year with us at USC. And uh, uh, we combined the burn database with the USC database, a grand total of 4,000 patients. Uh, with really the most exquisite data available and we looked at uh, uh, outcomes of patients who had had lymph node dissection up to the pelvic brim versus those who had gone up to the inferior mesenteric artery and really the oncologic outcomes were no different. So, so the concept of skip lesions is accurate. The fact that if, there are, if the pelvis is negative, chances that there would be higher up uh, lymph nodes are rare, it's not zero, it's rare. In our experience, about six, seven percent of patients will have a negative pelvis. Whether or not those higher positive lymph nodes constitute widespread metastatic disease versus not remains to be seen. But at least it's my impression that uh, the Mansura data and the burn data absolutely do not recommend going above the aortic bifurcation. At USC, we go up to the inferior mesenteric artery. I'll show you our technique for it. And uh, uh, you might know already that the SWOG is right now in the midst of a prospective randomized study uh, in which about five or 600 patients is the uh, uh, number that uh, has to be reached to get statistical significance. So this prospective randomized study once and for all is going to address whether or not a lymph node dissection up to the uh, iliac brim versus up to the IMA is needed. Uh, so here goes, here is our technique. We like to do our radical cystectomy first, lymph node dissection next. I don't think there is much plus either way. Uh, I can easily see the argument of those who say that do the lymph node dissection first, it will set up your cystectomy beautifully and you'll actually save time. I completely see the, the logic of that, but either way is fine. Horses for courses. So if this thing plays. <clears throat> 
So this is our video about uh, high extended node dissection. And so basically what we are doing right now is the right-sided clearance. So you can see the right external iliac, right external iliac artery and vein, the obturator nerve. Now we are heading up cephalad on the vena cava. So that's the vena cava that is being dissected. We come up, if I can put a hold on this. So uh, our general strategy, this is just a short video. So our general strategy is to clean out the right external iliac area first, okay, then come to the right common iliac, then we move the right common iliac medially, and then we dive down and clean out the fossa of Marseilles, that takes about 10 minutes right there, and then we come out, and then we go cephalad on this inferior uh, vena cava, we do the right paracaval, the precaval dissection, we go up to the right renal vein, then we hang a left, and we are on the aorta, and then we start marching distal on the aorta, and actually, often, we are a centimeter or two cephalad to the inferior mesenteric artery. So we clean out the front of the aorta. Um, below the IMA, we don't uh, go across on the opposite side to preserve the parasympathetics. And then we do the intraaortocaval dissection. And then we take this dissection down to the aortic bifurcation, at which point we do the presacral dissection there. And then we hang a left and we retract the colon up and go below the mesocolon to do the left common iliac and where the left common iliac bifurcates is where we stop. So the entire right side, the cava, the aorta, the presacral and the left common iliac is done just from this area and once we get to the left common iliac then we move the colon back over and do the left uh, uh, distal, okay. And in so doing, you find the left ureter beautifully, you have a beautiful, nice wide window, you flip that thing over, it's pretty straightforward. So this is not dissection going up on the aorta, now we are coming down uh, on the IMA, so you can see that is the IMA in your view, and the aorta is below it, so that's the inferior mesenteric artery, and now we are doing the, um, uh, now we are onto the presacral, so you see on, the, on your, on your right hand, you see the right common iliac. On the left, you see the left common iliac. And the pre-sacral tissues uh, are being dissected. Urstudor feels that if you do this, you can potentially set up, uh, uh, you know, uh, some uh, bladder uh, dysfunction. But here we go. So here is the aorta, the uh, right and left uh, iliacs. Here is the left ureter brought in through the hole in the mesocolon. On, on the right side, by the way, we perform uh, uh, ureteral margins uh, on every patient and indeed in those who have a CIS positive you don't need to keep marching up but certainly if there is overt malignant disease you are duty bound to get to a negative margin. Uh, as regards results are concerned uh, our lymphadenectomy typically takes about an hour to hour and a half if we don't go beyond the uh, if we don't go cephalad to the uh, uh, aortic bifurcation, you can cut out another half an hour, 45 minutes right there, but it does take time, so it, this is not something you can do on the fly. Uh, and our range of number of lymph nodes retrieved are from 50 to 92. That is our, in the past 20, 25 cases that we looked at, uh, our range is 50 to 92, mean is about 68 lymph nodes, and that compares head to head with our open colleagues. When I got to USC, I, I made it a point on day one to have our open colleagues be in the operating room to critique us and, and reorient us. And literally, before I got to USC, I didn't know how to do a nice node dissection. No one in Cleveland did a thorough node dissection. We looked at the Cleveland data, mean number of lymph nodes in open radical cystectomy in Cleveland was about 14 or 15. And uh, 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 clearly, there are many factors that go into this. Uh, uh, the the, if you send the nodes off in packets, you'll get more lymph node yield. If you pay the pathologist per lymph node, you'll get a higher lymph node yield and stuff like that. But, uh, uh, you know, bladder cancer clearly is a serious disease and every effort that uh, has to be done to uh, get oncologic clearance, it behooves us to do that. And personally, I'm of the mindset, not just in bladder cancer, but in all oncologic, uh, robotic, and laparoscopic surgery, is to first follow the gold standard of open surgery, okay? Show them that technically we are every bit as adept without any shortcuts. Once that is done, then the fight becomes much easier. Then we can start going to the next level. But we feel confident, as do our open colleagues, 
as do our open colleagues, feel confident that robotically we do every bit of our due diligence during our node dissections as, as do they. Happy to take questions. Uh, any questions for Dr. Go? So, Indy, did I understand you to say that you didn't really believe that there was much benefit going above the aortic bifurcation, yeah. but you guys are going above the aortic bifurcation? Yeah. I mean, currently we are, again, uh, uh, just we're following in the footsteps of the open okay. colleagues. When I showed up at USC, we do between, uh, you know, 170 to 200 radical cystectomies a year. And uh, last year we did 150. You know, Don Skinner retired. John Stein passed away. We took a hit. Uh, but... Uh, before I got there, Jim, 100% uh, of radical cystectomies were done open surgically. Uh, in two years now, 85% uh, are still done open surgically, 15% are done robotically, and uh, uh, we are just following. Uh, okay. yeah. I understand. Uh, Indy, uh, you're the man who pioneered uh, laparoscopic cystectomy. Now you've moved to robotic. Uh, what are your feelings about the differences? Are there any in your mind, in your mind, for you? And if they're not, why not? Well, uh, Prokar, uh, <clears throat> I was driven not by um, uh, any kind of uh, risk constraints on our ability to deliver the product. So we felt very, very comfortable that uh, we could do all the due diligence necessary for the prostate, the kidney, and the bladder. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, it, it was really market forces that drove me to robotic surgery. And uh, uh, I am absolutely happy to say that uh, Mani Menon was right, that, uh, uh, doing, uh, that, that robotics is clearly it's easier, no question. But again, I mean, getting past that, uh, uh, getting past that to justify a $2 million uh, investment in my heart, I have to feel that we are really delivering value. So yes, I feel uh, robotically the cystectomy, really, you know, you can fly through it either way. Uh, the node dissection, no question. So maybe in the pelvis is fine, but as soon as you start coming from the aortic bifurcation higher up, you're basically operating like this, and not many can do that. Uh, so I think it's better. And clearly, uh, we are doing our uh, diversions intracorporeally. So, yeah, you can do it laparoscopically, but why? And this is a more facile way to go. So, yes, our uh, minimally invasive cystectomies are now all robotic. Our prostates are all robotic. I really feel that you can do a better job. Uh, you can really nuance the nerves, nuance the urethral stump, et cetera, et cetera, as Jim will be the first to tell you. And uh, for partials, again, you know, um, one doesn't need it, but having said that, you can do every bit as good a job. Uh, sometimes I feel if I had the needle in with my laparoscopic instruments, I could suture faster. Uh, but that really is uh, not uh, um, an issue now because we are doing uh, the good. 95, 98% of my partials are now unclamped, zero ischemia. And uh, uh, robotically, I really feel robotically to dissect out the hilum, to dissect out the arteries, the tertiary branches, etc., etc. Are more, I'm more facile doing it robotically than laparoscopically. And then when we start incising the kidney in a radial manner, the hook of the robot is a little bit thicker than the hook of the, than the laparoscopic hook. So, so the, the, the hemostasis as we are doing our parenchymal incision is a little more reliable, a little more robust. So I'm a convert, guys, and uh, you know, I'm loving it. Thank you, you very much.